Hello and welcome to Datacast Solutions Statistics and Data Mining 101 using Nine. In this chapter we're going to take a look at using the techniques for visualization and pattern recognition that we talked about in the prior chapter and generating an interactive charts in Nine to to locate those patterns and in this case using bar charts and histograms. Oddly enough, most people seem to think these two charts are the same, and they actually, while they visually appear to be very similar, they differ in a critical aspect. Uh, the type of data that you present in a bar chart versus a histogram is significantly different. In a bar chart, we're representing categorical data, and that categorical data is then represented with a height of the bar representing the summation of one of the numerical values for it. So in this case the example is for each individual state we're looking at the per capita income for these four states. So the bar chart represents a categorical value with a numeric value summed against it. Much like a bar chart, the histogram visually is very similar. One significant difference is traditionally a histogram will not have a space in between the bar. And the columns, instead of being a categorical value, the columns represent quantitative variables. And then the height of the column indicates the size of the, of the group being uh, represented. In this case, it's showing per capita income across five different age groups. So very slight subtle nuance but the difference between quantitative variables and categorical variables you now know are significantly different. I would have to say that one of the most um, the, the most important distinctions between these two where a categorical variable versus a quantitative variable is that it's always appropriate to talk about the skewness of a histogram but not in a bar chart. And by, his, by skewness, of course, we may call from the prior chapter, that refers to um, observations that fall outside the low end of the x-axis. Um, you know, values that are too high or too low, uh, gaps in it. Um, we were looking for bimodal and multimodal and so on. Um, that would only be appropriate with a histogram. Um, when you're talking about categorical data, there are, is no data that steps outside of that value. All right, before we take a look at how NIME actually applies um, the histograms and bar charts, let's take a look at just to quickly refresh or remind you the different ways that you can use NIME visualizations. Under the Views tab here in the Node repository, the principal and most active way that NIME wants you to make and create views is through the JavaScript views. These are the bar chart, histogram, and all the other forms of charts that we're going to be working on. These are interactive charts. Uh, they're the modern version based on JavaScript, and these are the versions that um, are currently supported by Nine. They do have some additional views, however. Under the local tab of the views, they have, these are the Nine views. These are the old legacy versions, and they have not been removed yet, but they're still, um, they're still supported. They're, de they're going to be eventually deprecated and replaced. No new development is going to be done on these. Also, the third-party vendor JFreeChart has been integrated into Nine to provide some additional mechanisms for producing histograms. So you can see I've got a histogram under the Nine charts and a histogram under the JFreeCharts. I'm going to be focusing on the versions that are under the JavaScript views. Finally, as a reminder, there's one other version under the Nine Labs, and um, those are the JavaScript views for Plotty. Okay. So again, this is a third-party vendor library that has been integrated into um, that has been integrated into Nine to provide. Uh, uh, additional capabilities, but I'm going to be focusing purely right now on the JavaScript view since those are the ones that Nime recommends you use right now anyway. All right, so let's go ahead right now and create our first version under the views. Let's go into the JavaScript views 
and let's go ahead and create a bar chart. So again, recall the bar chart is for displaying categorical data, and that's all it's going to give me. So when I double click on this, it's going to ask me for a category column. So in my case, I'm going to take, say, marital status. And I can do an occurrence, or I can count, excuse me, the count current, and the sum or average are my three choices I'm going to be able to take for any of the numeric fields. I'm just going to do a, a record count here. And then under the general plot options, I can supply some of the chart information like the headers for the axis and label and so on. Um, and describe, because this is JavaScript interactive, um, do I things like uh, display the, the legend? Do I want to display the tooltip engine as I move the mouse over values to see them? And then there are some control options to say when this displays interactively on the web portal, um, what should be available? Can they edit the title? Can they edit the subtitle and axes? These are all just options that can be made available. And the interactivity within the chart, can the user make a selection of one of the values? You would use this to change the value of another chart so that as you selected one chart, another chart would be reflected with its value because it would a combination of subscribing and publishing events. That's all part of the visualization class. So if I execute and open the view for this bar chart, <coughs> I've now got each individual, and you see as I hover over them, they'll change colors. I can see the values. That's the tooltip version. But I've got one for each version of the chart. All right, and finally, let's take a look. Instead of the bar chart now, let's go ahead and put a histogram out for numerical values. And numerical values are going to be what Nime refers to as binning. It's going to be doing the same count or sum, but in groups um, so that we can show frequencies. So I'm going to take a column and let's say um, I'm going to take hours per week. And again, just count records um, in hours per week. But I need to know the binning to apply to them. So I can do a fixed number of bids or I can do um, a comma separated list of values. Um, for example, like this to say I can put them and break them out this way. Um, the binning names can be basically the midpoints of each of the bins or the outlying borders of them. So this just allows me to control which bins are going to... I'm just going to go ahead with a fixed number of bids and say four of them. And then some general plot options, just like the last one, the general plot options, control options, and interactivity all function the same. So there's my headers and which interactive options I want to be able to place on the screen and the interactivity about them being able to select and publish events. So when I execute and open the views for the histogram, I'll get my four ports and the midpoint of each one as hours per week as it created them. All right, now in this example, I'm taking some donor data and I'm showing based on the frequency of the data, so counts essentially, um, across the person's age. So how many donations are made um, to this organization based on the age of the person doing the donations? And I can start to see the histogram plays out as a frequency. And another way to look at that would be as an area chart instead, um, which, and in both of these cases, of course, you can see that distinctive bell curve, that, that shape, the standard distribution shape that we've discussed before. And some of the distinctive shapes that we're going to see in that histogram or area chart are going to be the normal distribution or a bimodal distribution. And then we can see and measure the skewness, where there are a few extreme observations to the right or a few extreme observations to the left that are impacting the graph. So a frequency distribution is essentially a histogram as a count. The, it's a count of the number of observations by sorting them into the classes or bins, as far as NIME is concerned, and counting each number of occurrences within each bin. Um, 
you know, a good rule of thumb is to aim for approximately 10 is usually a good number to start with. And you can refine the values based on how you're seeing the plot show up. If you see too much information showing into one bin, um, you might want to break that up. So here's a typical example I might see of a frequency distribution where it's a count by fireman's weight. Um, what's the weight of a typical fireman and count how many firemen fall within each of those weight categories. So you can see and get a quick distribution. You can very quickly zoom in on and say that's roughly where the, the, the 150 to 159 range is where most of the firefighters land. Another way of looking at it where relative frequency provides, you know, the way to view each as a percentage of the entire distribution, cumulative frequency provides the sum of all of those distributions. And let's take a look at how those show up visually different when you're comparing relative frequency, relative frequency, and cumulative frequency. When I look at the fireman weight chart of frequency compared to relative frequency as a percentage, even though the numbers are different in terms of one was a count and one was a percentage, what you should notice is the bar charts themselves, the histograms themselves, excuse me, are absolutely the same. They don't change shape, they just change the value across the y-axis because relative frequency is just a percentage instead of a count. The cumulative frequency, however, is different. It's the sum, it's the running total, basically. So each bar is bigger than the next, representing the sum of the total. And so I can see the cumulative frequency compared to relative frequency, the shape of the bar chart itself is actually changing now. That completes this chapter of the class. Feel free to move on to the next chapter.